was the uh, Thor T-shirt iron arm giveaway right now at Greenville. Jeremy McGrath, Austin Forkner, and Joey Sabachi are signing autographs, and the gate is down in this one as we roll toward the Bell Helmets Whole Shot Award. I believe that is the 32 of Jordan Bailey out of Orlando, Florida. As riders off the racetrack trying to remount the racetrack and reposition themselves there. But Bailey already under fire and pressure. He's got two riders coming in on him hard and fast. Carter Halpain out of Lubbock, Texas on the EBR Performance Ultimus Motorsports Thor MTF back machine is right there in the thick of things, as is that uh, number 84 of Tanner Ward out of Canada on the KTM Canada, Frank Fit Canada. Also uh, FMF Nahilo Troy Lee Designs Canada back machine. And watch these riders jockey for position here in Moto 1 of the Schoolboy 2 class. It is the 32 machine still holding down point. Jordan Bailey, but he's got company. Like we said, those two riders just keep sticking their nose into the situation. And now it looks like Calpain may be trying to go for the pass there. The 82 machine trying to go on the outside Side-by-side side as they come out of Storyland. And Halpain has taken over the lead. The big checkup from the neck up as he looks back right square in the eye of the 32 of Jordan Bailey as he goes by and now is trying to stretch things out as Bailey's got his head down. He's charging it. He's trying to keep Halpain from walking away with this one. Bailey definitely looking for an answer. Doesn't want, uh, doesn't want Halpain to just take off and get away. What can happen then now with this little bit of uh, moisture that's added to the track, you're going to give premier line choice to the leader. And that's exactly what is happening right now as the 32 machine of Jordan Bailey, who grabbed wow. the Bell Helmets whole shot award, led for the most of this lap. But at the end, it is, again, the 82 of Carter Halpain out of Lubbock, Texas, taking the lead point. Show is that the 83 no, wait, machine? That's 83. Man, i got to get my glasses cleaned. That was 83. Wow. I am sorry, Garrett Marchbanks. Wow. And that's the – now, I was one writer that I mentioned there a few moments ago. My monitor, I need a bigger monitor or, <laughs> or, or, or something because that looked like an 82 to me. But and you know you had me reading into it. I, I it know. looked like it to me too. But here's the thing. We've seen those kind of performances out of the 82, so that's really no surprise. And it's really no surprise that it's Garrett Marchbanks either that is up front doing what he is doing. As I said, leading into this moto, Matt, that Garrett had some struggles in earlier motos, but to be looking for – bigger and better things out of him for this particular moto. And lo and behold, he does just exactly that. I do apologize for not giving him the credit for making that pass on that first lap. But now that we know a little better about what's going on there, we can see that Garrett Marchbanks is already starting to stretch things out over his teammate there, Jordan Bailey. Carter Halpain, the rider that I thought was your leader, is actually in the number three spot. Caden Altenreith is in the number four spot. Tanner Stack in fifth. Brock Pappy is sixth. And these are all names that we talked about. Now, uh, Cade is another one of those riders that's uh, becoming an elite rider more and more, and uh, we're probably going to get to know this rider a lot more throughout the course of this 2016 Amateur National Championship Finals. Uh, Tanner Amaryllis back there in the number seven spot. Kobe Hefner, as uh, Kevin says, Kobe, Kobe Hugh Hefner <laughs> in the eighth place position. Justin Rod Bell is ninth, and William Garrison rounding out the top ten. Wyatt Lionsmith, Carter Gordon, Levi Newby, Golden Keck, or Gordon Keck, I should say, Spencer Winter, Dylan Greer, Austin Smith, McMill or McClellan Heil in 18th. Connor uh, Gar Garadina is 19th. And uh, Matteo Johnson rounds out your top 20 at the end of that first one. Now, a little bit better. I do see that as an 83. And uh, I see that uh, Garrett Marchbanks, though in the number one spot, is not as comfortable as what he would hope and like to be at this point. But still, a couple of seconds nearly. A well, 1.6 according to official timing and scoring. Marchbanks over Jordan Beatty. Carter Halpain 4.4 seconds back in the third spot. Cade Alden right in the number four position is still Stack Pappy Rod Bell. Track starting to take on a little bit of a different face right now, Rodney. It's been a little while since we've uh, seen some maintenance, and these guys really starting to hammer some of these corners, starting to get actually some acceleration bumps on the exits, starting to notice uh, right there, actually drifting through a bit of a smooth corner. But these guys really starting to change the face of this track now as we move into what is it, uh, about 1.15 in the afternoon with a little bit of fresh moisture on that track. Going to be a whole different uh, ball game as we move out through the rest of the afternoon. 
Certainly will be, and this, uh, I stepped outside there while you were doing the uh, interviews. It also feels like temperatures have come down a little bit. I mean, there's still a little stuffiness in the air, but it's not quite as intense as it was 30 minutes or so ago. Yeah, Rodney, it's the, the air is still a little thick and heavy, but the air temp itself feels like it's come down several degrees. So with that, that's got to be some sigh of relief, I think, for some of these riders out here on the track. Now, I realize with all the equipment and stuff that they're uh, and safety apparatuses that they're wearing out there that and the physical exertion that the heat, the temperature is still pretty warm, but it's not as bad as it could be, all things considered, at this particular point. Now, right now, 203 seems to be what you need to run to run up front, and Garrett Marchbanks and Jordan Bailey are the ones doing that, a 203.093 to a 203.905. Between he and Bailey, the difference at the uh, finish line after two was 1.6 seconds. And behind him, things really starting to tighten up as well as Tanner Stack, Cade Aldenreith, and Carter Halpain. A bit of a battle going on for that number three position as we see now Halpain on the Yamaha. Those guys are all right there together, Rodney. Uh, you know, early in this one, only on lap number three, so more than half this race to go. A little bit of strategy may be going on right now with things becoming a little bit slick. Looked like somebody went down right there on the top of that jump. Yeah, very well. My, may have. And you know something yeah, else there to it point is. out. Uh, oh, look at this. Oh, man. That is the number 30 of Cade Aldenright, the uh, former fourth and now third, uh, fifth place ride. Tanner Stagg got around him for the fourth place position. So Cade has fallen back a few more positions right after passing that finish line. Here's another note to wow, ponder. Wow, battle. I, I was thinking that Halpain, for some reason, was riding on a Kawasaki. He's actually a Yamaha rider, so my bad twice in his moto. <laughs> Tanner Stack riding like a man possessed right now. Look at this guy crouched down, really getting the weight centered over the bike, grabbing a big handful from the inside. Look at wow. that, hopping that thing out into the Ten Commandments. Man, these riders are displaying uh, pure... Uh, will right now and heart and desires each and every one of these guys want their position on the racetrack they're willing to fight for it and they're willing to fight to take it away from the guy in front of them right now and that's the great thing about this uh, amateur national championship finale the best of the best have culminated here this week for what we're watching and this is great the greatest amateur motocross race in the world right here today this week no ifs ands or buts about it march banks bailey hal Payne, stack and uh, we're going to wait and see how quickly Kate Audenreich got up but I believe that Brock Pappy would be top five now putting Justin Rodbell in sixth William Garrison in seventh Wyatt Lionsmith in eighth ninth Tanner Amaryllis and Dylan Greer now into the number 10 spot keep an eye out for the 77 of Dylan Greer also Greer out of Summerfield Florida an EBR performance Travis Blackburn motocross score Altus, Altus Atlas I should say FMF Dunlop machine he is uh, Another force to be reckoned with, one that we've watched grow up through the ranks here at Loretta Lynn's and one that has obviously, I think, Megawatt not gotten the start that he was hoping or looking for here in this uh, Schoolboy 2 Moto 1. Yeah, obviously you always want to get up there. You know, you want to uh, obviously have that whole shot definitely be in the top three to top five. What happens then? Any further back than that, you're really going to start getting bunched up. The top five, now you could go five wide, four wide through most of these corners if that was the case. But after turn two, turn three, that won't be the case. So, yeah, he was wanting a little better start than he has. But he's working with what he's dealt and uh, putting in a great ride nonetheless. Four laps down now for March Banks, Bailey, Stack, Hal Payne up to fourth, Pappy, as we said, in the number five spot, Rod Bell in sixth. Alden Wright actually getting up in seventh, so not as much damage as, damage as originally thought there for that rider. So he holds on to seventh. That means that eighth is William Garrison, Wyatt Lionsmith, and ninth, Dylan Greer, in the number 10 spot. This is after four laps of racing complete. You can see it almost looks really smooth right now, Rodney. Uh, the rain has actually put a little texture to the top of those Ten Commandments. But as we've seen, guys entering those things just a bit sideways right now. So very critical to get a good drive into there. But we take a look at what's happening on the track, though. March Bank's very calculated ride. Just about two seconds, 1.895 over Bailey last time. Tanner Stack about 10 seconds back. So Bailey and March Bank's really going to battle this. We're going to take it to the end. On uh, coming up on the end of lap number five here, 
the number 83 machine able to maintain a little bit of space to work with, but uh, Bailey keeping him on us right back there watching those lines. Not far, but you see Bailey come into the picture right there. So uh, not, not necessarily a done deal right now in our Schoolboy 2 13 to 16 BC. Hey, I want to wish a happy birthday to a listener that is watching at home on racertv.com. Say a happy birthday to Missy Bond from her loving sister Angie. She happy loves her birthday, very much. Missy. Yeah, yeah happy, happy birthday, Missy. Too bad you couldn't be down here with us this year. <laughs> you too, Angie. Just don't have Chris <laughs> kick my butt or anything like that. <laughs> All right, one more lap. Number five in the books there, Rodney. <laughs> Garrett Marchbanks this time. Look at the gap. About 4.5 seconds over top of Jordan Bailey. So increasing that real estate just a bit. Tanner Stat going from 10 and a half seconds back to just about 11 seconds. Halpin right now in that fourth position. Pappy holding down the number five spot this time around. He's sitting about 13 seconds back. So looking at lap times now, look at this, Rod. About 2.04 for our top three riders. Yeah, our top three riders on that 2.04 mark. And our fast time, of course, Garrett Marchbanks, 2.02 on lap number four. Wow, that's that's getting fast. That's the Schoolboy 2 class we're looking at with a 2.02 right. lap time, and that's that's pretty impressive. We're seeing some of the A classes down in the 157s, 158, and 159 range. So track conditions are coming around. We're starting to see the lap times pick up, and I think, like you said a few moments ago, the, the amount of moisture that we saw put down there actually was uh, a, a positive for this racetrack rather than a negative. In the waning uh, moments, uh, we're in the uh, last half of this moto anyway. Looks like some of the riders start, starting to struggle a bit with that big right-hander uh, coming out of the backpack there, getting really deep. So, guys, got to be careful in that bike position. Looks like maybe the disc rotor, uh, the brake rotor, maybe the uh, brake pedal stuff catching in there. Of course, on a uh, right-hander, that would be the shifter hanging up, so... Wow, Tanner Stack looking pretty good right now. He's trying to work through some lap traffic. Stack is 11.2 seconds back of Bailey in third right now. Hal Payne, 7.7 .7 seconds. Brock Pappy's 13 seconds back. Here's the, the tight one. The 58 of Justin Rodbell is pressuring Pappy now for fifth place. Just uh, curious about our lap, uh, our time in this moto. We don't see our moto clock on the board. We're trying to figure it out here today. So 204s, uh, you're looking at two minutes, six laps will be 12. So we're a little over 12 minutes, working on 14 minutes into this race. So only a couple of laps really left to go at this point. That's why I was thinking maybe about eight. So Yeah, so we're uh, just wrapped up lap six with March Banks there. 204 lap time, still 5.4 second lead over Bailey. Stack 17 seconds back of Bailey. No changes there for Hal Payne. Brock Pappy, uh, let's see. Kate, ooh, look at this. Kate Aldenreith, who had dropped back from seventh after being a solid top five there for a good portion of the early part of this, is now behind Brock Pappy by less than a second. They've got a 17 second gap back to seventh place. Dylan Greer, the 77, then it's Heil. Naran and Lionsmith to round out the top 10. But again, all eyes, I believe, are on the 14 Yamaha of Brock Pappy and the 30 of Caden Audenreuth because these two, I'm sure, will have a very intense battle. I know the intensity at which Brock Pappy rides at, and it looks like the Cade is pretty doggone hungry right now. So these two fireworks are about, sparks are about to fly. You know, it, it's interesting you say that, Rodney. I have the same feeling about both those guys are super intense. Uh, Pappy never lets up. Uh, you know, we watched him get a bad start yesterday, and man, just uh, rode the wheels off that machine, never gave up, brought himself back up into uh, uh, salvaging, some, uh, salvaging some good positions there. But when you look at what's going to happen here on this last lap, man, it could be anybody's game right there. It sure can, and this is where uh, you earn uh, your keep, I guess you could say, in motocross, especially here at Loretta Lynn's. It's these closing stages of these motos you know the early part of the moto a lot of things happen and a lot of people are fast but it's who's there at the end that mat matters the most and these uh, moments right here are the ones that count as far as loretta lens are concerned 
And the waning moments of the Schoolboy 2, 13 to 16 BC class Moto 1 is well up on us right now. Marchbanks, Bailey, Stack, Halpane, Pappy, and Altenreith. See my good buddy down there, Greg Brotman from Rad MX, doing some video. That who that was? Yeah. Right on. Yeah, doing some video uh, videography work for riders out there. He uh, makes uh, personalized event uh, DVDs that uh, focus on them and good things for uh, social media and pretty cool little program he's got going down there. Been a big part of Loretta Lens for a long, long time. So closing moments, Garrett Marchbanks on his way to a Moto One win, and I know, uh, hey, you know uh, that right there, we have uh, a little bit of a GNCC tie-in with this guy, uh, one of the uh, AMA representatives that works at the Grand National Cross Country uh, Series. His son, Cody Gearhart, is actually the mechanic for Marchbanks now. So I think that's a pretty cool thing to be able to see this all come to pass for these ride for that rider and that fam those families actually as. There's Marchbanks around on board the 83 machine. One more time to go. It's the Amsoil last lap now underway here in the Schoolboy 2 13 to 16 year old class. Jordan Bailey, six seconds back in second. 21 plus seconds back in third. Now is Tanner Stack, Carter Halpain, and Cade Aldenreif. Now that's one of the race that I was looking for. Never could find out there. But Brock Pappy drops to six now. And Dylan Greer is up to seventh and still a 17 second lead. But wow, they were nose to tail at the end of lap number six. And at the end of seven, Aldenreif had a 17 second lead over Brock Pappy, who now only has three seconds over Dylan Greer. So something must have happened to Pappy there and that to exchange for the number five position. But nothing happening too much for this guy as he went to work early on in the race, made things happen. We're talking about the 83 of Garrett Marchbanks as he winds his way through the valley here in Hurricane Mills, Tennessee. A victory lap, if you will. Six seconds, he can't rest too much on his morals or make any mistakes as the 32 of Bailey will be right there ready to capitalize at any given time. And Bailey is going to try to do just that. You can bet your bottom dollar about that. He is going to try to capitalize on any mistakes that the 83 machine might happen upon here. Oh, like that right there. That could have been a costly mistake for Garrett Marchbanks as that inside line run is getting very deep and not only that, getting very uh, tough to traverse even for these big bikes out here. Uh, nearly letting that one go on the Amsoil last lap is Garrett Marchbanks, but he appears to be ready to hold on to it to the checkers. Final turn, the drive up, the double doubles, and to the Sunoco checker. No, this is a white flag, I guess. One more to go even after this. This will be the Amsoil last lap. So, and our producer says the Amsoil, that last lap was the Amsoil second to the last lap. lap. <laughs> Way to cover your bases there, Price. But regardless, Marchbanks has got a... Uh, Great thing going on here, and I apologize again for the miscommunication on that part, but all right, March Banks, he watched the flags himself. He wasn't listening to a thing that I said. He had no idea that I thought he was coming to checker flag that time. Jordan Bailey does get that uh, one more lap, though, to try to sort things out as he does gain a full two seconds. Now on March Banks, the gap is just over four at 4.021. Bailey only a couple of seconds faster, so it's going to have to be more than that in order for 
March Banks to be challenged for the win. And as we look back, you can see that right now the 83 of March Banks realizing that he is going to take a lot for that gap to close up too. He just needs to ride his lines, get home to the checkers, and uh, seal this one in the books for a Moto 1 win on, what he, on his way to what he is hoping to be his Schoolboy 2 13 to 16 BC National Championship. There's where we were a lap ago whenever he nearly made the mistake, so it's a completely different line choice that he uses coming through that section, and rightfully so. March Banks in the Thor sweeper turn now around the Thor Beach. And look at that rider coming up hard behind him. Jordan Bailey head down and charging hard and fast, but not going to be enough as the checkers do fly this time. The Sunoco Fuels checker flag. And March Banks very satisfied that that Moto 1 win was as convincing to himself as it was the rest of the motorcycle racing world that he came here to Loretta Lynn's fully prepared to battle for a championship, as did Jordan Bailey. Tanner Stack were looking to check in in the number three spot. 25-second gap. i got to say, these are probably some of the biggest gaps I've seen in amateur national motocross racing in quite some time. I mean, these gaps are looking nearly like GNCC gaps after only 20 minutes instead of a couple of hours. But, uh, wow, that, to me, is really showing that uh, this track is – a great separator and divider as far as these uh, riders are concerned. And it takes everything from not only sheer talent, will, heart, and desire, but also great conditioning to just be able to traverse this for a 20-minute moto out there. And we look down on the podium, we see that that is the GOAT himself, Ricky Carmichael, down there, helping with the uh, placement of Garrett Marchbank's bike onto the podium. That itself, my friends, is pretty spectacular as we get set to head down to the Race Tech post-race interview here in just a few moments. So the GOAT is in the house. Showtime is in the house. He's signing autographs right now at uh, Greenville, believe it or not, along with uh, Joey Sabachi and, of course, Austin Forkner, both uh, graduates, recent graduates of Loretta Lynn's. We see Bailey in for second. Tanner Stack is third. Hal Payne in fourth. Cade Aldenreith in the number five spot. Brock Pappy holds on for sixth. Greer in seventh. McMillan Hale, or Hale in eighth. Chase Felong in ninth. And Wyatt Lionsmith on the Husqvarna rounds out the top ten. And we wait for mega wattage. Mega wattage. I'm just, just trying to kill. No. That was mega wattage. It wasn't lighting. Hey, by, by the way, while we're waiting on mega watt to make his way onto the podium, I want to say thanks to our good friends at Race Tech for the post-race interview. And uh, Race Tech Engine Services is now offering a full line of performance and rebuild services, including valve jobs, porting, honing, decking, and more. Visit them here at the ranch or online at racetech.com. That's R-A-C-E-T-E-C-H.com. Mega watt Matt Watson down on the podium with... Uh, Pretty satisfied, Garrett Marchbanks. All right. Trying to get these guys squared away real quick. Going to get our uh, winner, of course, Garrett Marchbanks up here. Incredible race taking place there just a minute ago. Watch these guys battle from start to finish. Some changing track conditions out there, but not affecting uh, the performance of these guys in the least bit. These guys adapt and changing up some lines, changing the uh, goggle setups just before this one, I'm sure. So lots of preparations being made for the ever-changing conditions down here at the ranch. So getting these guys lined out right now, waiting on Garrett Marchbanks to make his way on up here. Of course, Jordan Bailey in the second place. Jordan getting the whole shot today, and Tanner Stack finished up third so right now getting his face wiped off just a bit Garrett Marchbanks waiting on him right now we'll get him up here get uh, a few words from him get some pictures taken of course make our way into our second place rider Jordan Bailey today like I said also our whole shot winner and uh, 
Tanner Stack will follow him with that third place today. So if we can get Garrett on up here, we'll get him up here, get a few words from him right now. Get our get Garrett Marchbanks up here, please. All right, put your hands together for our winner here today. First place, Garrett Marchbanks. Garrett, come on over here behind the bike, my man. Everybody can see the uh, see the sponsors. Man, oh man, impressive performance right there. Rodney and I actually had some numbers uh, mixed up there. It started to rain, and on the camera couldn't really see. And we was like, my, my goodness, that's Garrett right there making the move. You got out front early and put in some real good laps. Yeah, definitely. I just tried to get a top three start. Got up there, got in the first, I think half lap in, and just tried to push 100% all the way through and tried to get a good gap and had some fun after that. Any close calls out there? Uh, I feel a lot of the lappers almost hit me a few times. It's a little scary, but it was it was a good race and had a lot of fun. Awesome. Who you want to say thanks to, bud? I thank the Lord for keeping me safe. Monster Energy, Kawasaki Pro Circuit, Team Green, just uh, Pro Circuit again, uh, Fox, Scott, Dunlop, Renthal, everyone I forgot. Just thank you so very much. Awesome. Congratulations. Garrett Marchbank, one more time. Put your hands together, you guys, with the win here in Schoolboy 2, Moto 2. So uh, Jordan Bailey waiting on him. Let's get Jordan up here right now, get a few words from him, have an opportunity right now to take a few more pictures with Garrett, but uh, waiting on Jordan to make his way up on the podium. Parade lap coming to an end on our next motor. There comes Jordan right now making his way up here. Jordan, let's put this around your neck here, bud. We're going to step up here to the front of the podium. Man, oh man, tell us about the changing conditions out there. Yeah, it uh, started to rain a little bit on the gate, but I, I practiced hard this summer, so I wasn't too worried, and I got off to a great start. It was a little iffy in the beginning, and uh, just rode a good race and kept it on two wheels. Looked like there were some lappers out there. Have any problem working your way through? Yeah, there was quite a few lappers, but uh, that's part of the sport, and uh, did my best to get around them and make a late charge, but it was a little too late, and uh, I'll get ready for the next one. Who do you want to say thank you to, boss? Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, keep me safe. Mom and Dad, everyone at MTF for helping me out with a great summer. Uh, everyone at Team Green, Kyle Soccer, built me a great bike. Pro Circuit, 7MX, Bell Helmet, Scott Goggles, Alpine Star, Dunlop, all my friends and family. Just thank you so much. Awesome. Congratulations. Put your hands together one more time for Jordan Bailey in that second position. Now waiting on our third place rider, Tanner Stack, to make his way up. Come on up here, Tanner. Oh, you know what, Jordan? Let's go ahead and give you your whole shot award. Where's she at? Where's our check? All right, waiting on uh, Tanner Stack to make his way up right there. There he comes, Tanner. All right. Finishing third place today. Come on up here, Tanner. Make your way up here into the middle. We'll get this thing kicked off before this gate drops. Third place today, man. You got to be pretty pleased with that pretty stacked class you're in. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of fast guys this year. Um, didn't get the best start. I uh, had a really bad gate pick, so I got pushed out really wide, but... Ended up getting like a top 10 get, uh, start. So I just passed, made a few passes and uh, ended up getting into third and just pulled my own race. End up on the box. That's never a bad thing here at Loretta's. Who you want to say thank you to? My mom, my dad, the whole Smart Top uh, Moto Concepts team, my mechanic, John, Seven, Race Tech. Um, Alpine Star, my brothers for coming out to watch me race. Um, CTI, 100%, uh, Yoshimira, whoever forgot, thanks. Awesome, well congratulations Tanner, great ride. Put your hands together, make some noise for this young man right here, Tanner Stack, and uh, Jordan Bailey. Hey Jordan, you wanna step up here real quick? Jordan Bailey, somebody grab Jordan Bailey for me right there. Send him back up here, get his Bell Helmets Hole Shot Award real quick, Jordan Bailey. So, hey, Jordan, will somebody grab Jordan right there? Thank you, guys. There he comes. Now we got his attention. A lot of noise down here. Jordan Bailey, our Bell Helmets Whole Shot Award winner for that moto. Jordan, congratulations putting that bike out front early, getting that whole shot. So on behalf of Bell Helmets, congratulations. And uh, accept this $100 whole shot award. Yeah, I'd, uh, I practiced a lot of starts this summer. That's been my weakness, and now I, I figured them out pretty good, and I uh, got to a good start that one, and I hopefully keep it going. All right, and I know you will. Congratulations, Jordan Bailey, with our Bell Helmets Whole Shot Award.